If you're anything like me, you are an absolutely massive UFC fan. Okay, let, let me first start off this video by saying that I love the UFC. It is bigger than any other MMA promotion, and to me, is the greatest sport in the world. Let me just start off by saying that, because I'm, I'm gonna be very negative in this video. Because, just like every MMA fan ever, as much as I love the UFC, there are problems with it. There's problems with the rule set. There is problems with the scoring. There's problems with the venue, management, the rule sets around how championships operate. There's a lot of problems with the UFC that in this video, if you made me the de facto Dana White, these would be my executive orders within the first week. Okay? Now, none of these are going to be game-breaking by any means. Actually, no. Let me take that back. There's going to be a few of these that are going to change the sport a little bit. But in my mind, this is going to change it for the better. In my time of watching this sport for I shit you not 12 years now, these are the problems that, that have always stuck out to me. But before I begin this legendary rant, please consider a like, comment, subscribe. And if you have a friend that would like this video, please consider a share. And if you don't, um, just copy the link. It helps me in the algorithm. And with that long-winded intro out of the way... Let's get started. Number one thing, okay? I, I want to try to keep, like, the, the divisions of changes with, within the same area. Number one, we're, we're going to start with the judging, okay? Number one, straight off the bat, five judges. We need more judges. You can, like, I don't trust the three judges that we get. Th my faith in MMA judging was hurt by Patty Pimblett versus Jared Gordon, and it died. When some motherfucker thought Cheeto Vera beat Corey Sanhagen. I don't care what you say. That dude needs to be investigated. Legitimately. If there is a world where you thought Cheeto Vera beat Corey Sanhagen, you should no longer have a career in judging. Let me fix this. You should no longer have a career in judging. I want this man to be outed. Put onto the street. So we know that this guy thought Cheeto Vera won. When you are dealing with like $150,000 of sow and win money, and you somehow convinced yourself that Cheeto Vera won, look into that dude's DraftKings Sportsbook. 100% there was something pissy going on with that. Five judges. Now, how I want them to pick these judges, I would like them to at least have some combat sports experience. I don't want them to come from boxing, because that's another thing I want to change. And guess what? Most of the judges are not employed by any MMA organization, not the UFC. They barely have anything to do with the UFC. They are recruited by a, a something that's not even connected to the UFC. And I wouldn't have a problem with that because there is some shady stuff that can happen with that. If the UFC has their own judges, yeah. Sometimes the scoring criteria, uh, criteria is going to be a little bit wild. You're going to see a lot more San O'Malley's beat Piotr Jans. But guess what? None of these judges are scoring from an MMA standpoint. Almost all of them come from boxing. That is a fact. It depends on the commission, but most, most of the time it's boxing. Another thing we're changing, the 10-point system. The 10-point system is one of the dumbest things I have ever seen. Like, I, I, I think most people agree. Like, don't get me wrong. It's funny to say you've been 10 7 It's funny to say that, oh, 10-8. I hate the scoring system. Because it was never designed for MMA. It was only ever designed for boxing. And the reason that the UFC has to use the boxing rule set is because all the commissions in the United States do not have a scoring system that they feel is professional enough for MMA. I shit you not, that's what they had to do. Because when the UFC was first starting, they did it on Native American reservations that didn't really have a commission. And if they did, it kind of could have gone, they didn't really care. Or they did it in the middle of casinos. When the commission started stepping in, they wanted them to use a boxing rule set because guess what? The biggest competition and the biggest proponent of UFC is just human cockfighting. I'm not kidding you. That is a real quote. Guess who that guy was paid by? Yeah, the WBC. Don't you just love career politicians? <laughs> Bro, it's fucked up. So, boxing rule set has no place in MMA. Absolutely not. I'm sorry. Next up, now we're, we're, we're still doing the rule set, but this we're moving on. Actually, I have one more to add for the judges. I'm just thinking about it right now. Every single judge has to atte um, attend a press conference. They have to attend the post-fight press conference. They need to do this, okay? I want to look them in the... I want reporters to look them in the eye, okay? And I want them have to explain their score. 
Now, I wasn't going to have to do this because I'm aware how MMA fans are. We're violent people. We watch a violent sport. The dude. The dude who scored it for Cheeto Vera had the most smug attitude about it. And he was like, I didn't even... I don't even listen to the commentary, bro. I, I can barely stand it. And according to where I was seating, I ruled Cheeto Vera as the winner. You need to lose your job! Legitimately. How do you? How are you still employed by anybody? You need to attend a press conference, and I want fans to ask you a question. Hey, uh, how did you think Cheeto Vera won? I want that to be a thing because of the smug... Because judges feel like they're untouchable. Because they are right now. Like, referees are more touchable than judges are because most people know what Herb Dean looks like. Most people know what Jason Herzog looks like. You don't know what Sal D'Amato looks like. You should be able to look at their face and be like, okay, that's the guy that scored it. That sounds harsh, but it's because they feel untouchable. We need, we need to break away from that. Last one for judging, and then I'll move into the actual rule set. All scoring has to be made public in between rounds. All the arguments that I've heard for not this being the case is that, oh, well, if somebody wins round one and round two, then they're going to take the third round off. They do that anyways. They do it. Dude, Israel Adesanya took the entire fight off against Yoel Romero. There was not public scoring. No, he was point fighting the entire fight because he knew it was a 10-9, 10-9, 10-9, They already know. You want to know how I know they know? Because it's not like they've been fighting for their entire lives, and they have an idea of what the scoring criteria is going to be. Might as well take the guessing game out of it, because then you're going to have another situation where fucking Pat Barry, Pat the Predator Barry, is going to tell his wife, Rose Nama Yunez, that he hooked up with when she was... I'm getting so off topic right now, but it is that annoying, because what you're going to get is a Rose Nama Yunez versus Carla Esparza fight where Pat Barry is telling her, you're winning the fight, honey. You're winning the fight. It's, a, it's You got a 10-9 in that round. And then you got Trevor Whitman that literally had to kick back Pat Barry out of the corner because of how pissed he was with him. Dude, how bad do you got to F up to get kicked out of your wife's corner? Yeah, scoring has to be made public after every single round. I don't care how you do it, Okay. Have the ring girl on the other side of the, the fucking number thing so off what the score was. I don't care how you do it, but you, you need to do this. Now, done with the judges. Maybe I'll come back to them later if I think of something, but now we're going to be going into the rule set, okay? If you are caught in a sub at the end of a round, you have to escape said sub to engage in the other round. Let me explain because this is something that ADCC does and I love this rule. As somebody who has lost matches because I've had a fully synced in triangle, a fully under the chin rear naked choke on somebody, I am about to win because they have mentally already said to themselves, I've, I'm winning by two points. I don't need to do anything. All I need to do is not tap for five more seconds. At ADCC, that shit doesn't fly. If I have a rear naked choke fully locked in on you, okay, and your consciousness is about to leave your body, you have to escape the rear naked choke to engage in the second round. How many fights have you seen where the dude that you bet on was going to win, but the round ends? How many times has Charles Oliveira had an anaconda or a Darsk choke locked in on somebody and they're saved by the round? I understand somebody's going to come into the comment section and be like, well, what about the comeback fights? I'm sorry. No more. Because you're artificially lengthening what that fight would be. If I have a fully locked in triangle and you're losing consciousness and you cannot escape, you don't deserve to see the second round. But I'm going to keep that same energy for finishes. If you are in a finishing sequence and I am laying down ground and pound on your face, okay? I'll even take it for Alex Pereira versus Israel Adesanya. That fight should have continued after that. Israel Adesanya rocked Alex Pereira at the end of the first round. Israel Adesanya should have the ability to finish that fight if they go to the ground. Now, we can iron out the details. Maybe if somebody's rocked on the feet, then since there isn't a control position in play, then you can separate and go to the corner. But I'm talking if I am on top of you laying down ground and pound and the referee is about to step in, but the, you're saved by the bell. I ultimately want to get rid of being saved by the bell I understand it's cool. I understand it's a cool thing to say. 
But how many discussions have been started over like, oh, well, he would have won, but he got saved by the bell. We're getting rid of that discussion entirely. No more getting saved by the bell. That can't be a thing. Fights will end sooner. Next thing I have written down over here. Divisions every 10 pounds. I don't even think this one's a controversial one. I think most people agree. The only argument that I have heard against a division every 10 pounds is they're like, well, I'm worried it's going to turn in the boxing. To give you an idea of how fucked boxing is when it comes to divisions and champions, imagine if there was a weight class every three and a half to five pounds, okay? Number one, three and a half to five pounds. And for every one of those divisions, this is the UFC's equivalent, Imagine if you had a PFL champion, a Bellator champion, a 1FC champion, a UFC champion, and a Pride FC champion. Now times that, every three pounds going from 120 all the way up to super heavyweight. You have something over 50 different titles. That is boxing. What I'm talking about is that let's keep it up. We have 135, 45, 55, and I want 65, 70 to switch to 175, 185, 195, 205, and then anything above 205 can be heavyweight. And no more weight limit on heavyweight. Create another division called super heavyweight. We are the only combat sport in existence that doesn't have a super heavyweight. And on top of that, we're also the only combat sport in history that has a limit on heavyweight. You're telling me human beings don't get bigger than Francis Ngannou? Who the fuck is Shaquille O'Neal then? What about Thor Bjornsson? Eddie Hall? We need people like that. That's what I want. Another thing I want added to this. Soccer kicks. I am sick and... This is coming from a jiu-jitsu guy. I should be allowed to drill you with a soccer kick. Stomp your face in. If you decide that is a viable strategy legitimately bring that back. I want the Pride FC rule for soccer kicks and foot stomps to be brought back. I don't understand how I can slice you open with elbows, make you look like a fruit after a fruit ninja playthrough, but I can't soccer kick you? I'm sorry, that's dumb. I can soccer kick your body when you're in turtle. That's perfectly fine. Now, I will say this, no, no strikes to the back of the head. I'm not going that far. Strikes to the back of the head are legitimately dangerous because... Getting hit behind your head, like, biologically, that is one of the most dangerous things that can happen. And I think that should be punished even harder. Okay? And I have an idea for how we're going to punish that, but I, I want to go on this first. I should be allowed to soccer kick you if I can hit the side or the front of your face. And on top of that, knees to a grounded opponent. I don't care if you have two weight-bearing arms on the ground. When we have an Aljamain Sterling, a Mavsar Evulev, a plus unnamed fighters out the wazoo that are taking advantage of this rule set by just merely putting their fingertips on the ground. That's not even the rule! The rule is, is you have to have one weight-bearing limb, palm on the mat, and people don't realize that it's not fingertips. If my fingertips are on the mat, I'm allowed to drill you with a knee. That is what happened with Mavsar Evulev. Arnold Allen should have won against Mavsar Evulev. Okay? In my mind, Arnold Allen... Not even in my mind. Mavs Arnold Evulev... Arnold e Arnold Evulev... Arnold Allen was robbed of a victory against Mavsar Ebulev because the rules are so confusing on what a grounded opponent is because we don't want a Pyotr Jan vs. Aljamain Sterling 2 to happen that every judge, if it looks like a grounded knee, separate, re-engage. No. If we're going to overcomplicate the rule, I say fuck it. Get rid of the rule. If you, are, if you want to put your hand on the canvas, you should be allowed to get drilled with the knee. Pyotr Jan should still be champion. There you go. Honestly, 100% that needs to be a thing. Another thing that we need to add in here, okay? Bonuses. Bonus. Let, hear me out. Hear me out. If you get a finish in any way, shape, or form, 50k bonus guaranteed. I am sick and tired of this game that we're playing where some motherfucker on the prelims is fighting their heart out and they get a finish. Which is what the fans want to see. And then Dana White just pretends it doesn't exist. And gives another 50k bonus to the millionaire Justin Gatesy. We'll get into what the fight of the night bonus would be. But I think a knockout bonus. A submission bonus. If you want to give submission artists 25,000 instead of 50,000. By all means do it. That's more money than they would ever get in Jiu Jitsu career. Might as well just give it to them now. All finishes should get a bonus. I don't care what it is. You will get more finishes. It'll work. Also, I just remember what I was going to say. Eye pokes, 
strikes to the back of the head, we attack your purse. 1FC has a really cool rule with here. They give you either a yellow card or a red card. If you commit an illegal accident, even one time, we take $25,000 out of your purse. Instantaneously. The fact is, is we're in a sport right now where I can poke you in the eye one time legally. John Jones, if he pokes somebody in the eye, I should be able to take 10% of his purse for doing that. If you're, if you think that getting eye poked in one eye, I have heard some of those delusional takes in the world. Oh, well, he only got poked in one eye. It's not like it affects the other one. Your eyes are sympathetic, dummy. You ever get your eye poked really bad and now like both your eyes are watered because your eyes are, oh, I hate that argument because, <sighs> brother, I if you eye poke somebody, you should lose 10% of your fight purse, guaranteed. In my mind, that is legalized cheating. A low blow should be 5%. Uh, like, dictate what the percentage are going to be. We should immediately punish illegal actions by going after their purse first and foremost. Okay? No more warnings. Attack the purse. If they do it multiple times, immediately disqualify. Another thing I want to add, let me find out where I'm at. I've been, oh, about the fight of the night bonus. I think along with Dana White doing a fight of the night bonus, and I think fight of the night should be more than 50K. Now, this is a controversial opinion, I, I know, but I think bonuses should be at least 75 and higher. If we're going to be doing the KO bonus, you can knock that down a little bit because I know we want to penny pinch a little bit. But a fight of the night bonus, especially on a numbered card, to me should be 75 to $100,000 flat rate. Not 300000 100000 I want to get more Max Holloway versus Justin Gacy moments. And I either want Dana White not to pick a fight of the night and to get fans to get into it. I would like... For UFC fans, go on a mobile app, go on the UFC app that almost like 10 people use, and they should be allowed to vote for what the fight in the night should be. Everything from the early prelims up to the main event, you should be allowed to vote for what you believe the main the uh, fight of the night should be, and that should be the People's Choice Award. They they played with this a little bit, but it was like a crypt it was like a crypto.com where hey if the fans vote you get ten Ethereum, some bullshit like that. No. A hundred thousand fans choice award. Who cares if it's like Conor McGregor again? I'm sure he's gonna put on a good fight. Fan like fans tend to pick what the exciting fights are pretty well. I think a lot of people underestimate combat sports fans when it comes to choosing what's exciting. And no more bonuses for Dagestanis. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Umar's pretty cool. I like Umar. Another thing, okay? Mandatory strip of champions if they cannot defend the belt every six, six to ten months. I think that is more than fair. In my mind, to be considered an active champion, unless there is a medical procedure that is actively prolonging it, and even then I'm 50-50 on. I think if you are fairly healthy... Every six months, you should be defending your title. If you do not, mandatory either put up an interim title or strip. How about this? How about this? I, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't have a script to figure out like what my exact line of thinking was. I think this is what I was thinking and I like it. Okay? If you do not defend the belt in six months, an interim belt should be put up for grabs. If you do not defend the belt for over a year, mandatory strip. That goes to John Jones. In my mind, John Jones, if we if he's not fighting till UFC 309 in November, that'll be almost one exact year. In my mind, Tom Aspinall, if he's not going to be next, John Jones should be stripped. It has gotten to that point of delusion where John Jones is flirting with the idea of fighting Alex Pereira over a Tom Aspinall that I do believe at this point John Jones should have been stripped of the title. You want to fight Stipe? Fine, fight Stipe, but it's not going to be for a title. You are hurting the integrity of this division. Every little bit of argument that I've talked about with Steve Miocic. Understand this. The only reason that I am coming at it with John Jones should be stripped is how crazy we've gotten to this point of trying to diminish what Tom Aspinall is worthy of doing in that division. Steve Miocic hasn't done shit in two years, hasn't won a fight in four years, 100%. He hasn't beaten a guy that was in the division. The last dude that he beat that isn't retired right now is Andre Arlovsky in 2017. Steve and Manchester should not be fighting for the title. If John Jones wants to do it, fine. Do it without a title. But yeah, mandatory strip after a year. Interim gets put up every six months. These divisions are getting held up by Leon Edwards, all these other like... And I, 
Listen. Islam Makachev, I like Islam. Defend the title every six months. You're doing better now. I'll give you that. Continue. Don't be playing this bullshit like all the other Dagestanis do and they only ever want to fight in the Middle East. No. You are going to have to fight two times a year, at least, to be an active champion. Now here comes my, my controversial ones. Pay-per-view prices should either be lowered or, or hear me out, we completely get rid of ESPN+. Plus. Hear me out. This is the big business moves that I'm making. What is it that ESPN Plus gives the UFC that the UFC cannot get themselves? Is it being a household name? Is it? Is it really? The ESP ESPN has tried their absolute best throughout the decades to diminish what MMA was. I maintain that. They didn't even let the Amanda Nunes, Daniel Cormier, they did not let them inside of the ESPYs. And instead... This still makes me mad. I'm going to spit some venom on this one. They allowed women's basketball players to get a fucking SP before they allowed Amanda Nunes to get anything. Before they allowed Daniel Cormier to get anything. They had to get the ESPYs in the fucking parking lot. I'm not kidding. You can find the video of this. They could not be given the reward in front of a crowd. Instead, they did a little bit of a promo. Here's your... Men's MMA Fighter of the Year. Here's your Women's MMA Fighter of the Year. Here's your SP. Okay, get the fuck out. We got some women's basketball players that really deserve it. Nobody cares. At this point, I'm sorry. I barely care about normal NBA. I don't... I, I am a UFC fan through and through. I don't, I don't even know who won, like, the NFL SP. And the reason that I am that petty on that is because that is the attitude that ESPN has had about MMA for decades. I'm not talking about the, the people in it, okay? I'm talking about the executives that are higher up. They do not give a fuck about MMA. They hate that the UFC has become popular. They hate that MMA is now starting to replace boxing in terms of being the global combat sport of the world. If you don't believe me, look at the numbers. I'm sorry, boxing has every reason to absolutely decimate the UFC, but they haven't been able to do that because the UFC is outperforming them year after year with putting on consistently good events. Get rid of ESPN. There's nothing that ESPN will bring to the table that can't be replicated. They are already a household name. People knew about Conor McGregor before the ESPN deal. They got the Reebok deal to appease ESPN. People blame Dana White for the sponsorships. Bring back sponsorships on the trunks. The reason that Reebok, Venom, all of those are a thing is because it was written into the contract that for UFC to be a part of ESPN, they, they had, the, all the athletes had to look more professional. They had to have a legit partner. And guess who is a pretty big donor to ESPN? Reebok. It's not even a conspiracy. I don't even blame them. It's business. But at the same time, if you're not going to give UFC the respect they deserve, I mean, you called it human cockfighting 20 years ago. I'm sorry, I, I don't have much respect for you. I say UFC cuts ties with ESPN. No more ESPN+. Plus. Make pay-per-views cheaper. Cut out the middleman of ESPN+. Plus. Create your own streaming platform. That's how I think it's going to go. Anybody who's followed me from TikTok, I have always maintained this is how it's going to go in the next 10 years. It's, it's going to take a while, but this is how I think it's going to go. The pay-per-view structure is going to be completely and utterly outdated. We are dealing with a generation that knows how to pirate more. Like, think about this. They never thought our generation was going to be better at pirating than better at buying a pay-per-view. It is easier to pirate than it is to make money to buy it. Pay-per-views are more expensive than they've ever been. $20 million worth of, of pay-per-views were pirated to watch Tyson Fury vs. Usyk. That is going to continue to happen because more and more people are going to know how to do it. So I say, stop making it embarrassing by hiding your pay-per-view numbers event after event. If you're going to do pay-per-views, make them cheaper. Cut out ESPN+, Plus. start your own streaming platform, make it with TKO. You, that's what I think it is. UFC and WWE forms a company called TKO. TKO becomes a streaming platform for WWE events, grappling events, kickboxing events, because I don't think a lot of people know this, Zufa who is the parent company of the UFC, is going to try to get into boxing and kickboxing. I think, in the future, Zufa is going to be a mega combat sport corporation called TKO. You're going to have Zufa Boxing, Zufa Kickboxing, Zufa Muay Thai, the UFC, WWE, all that's going to be under a streaming platform called TKO. You subscribe to that, all the pay-per-views are going to be cheaper, and it'll be a direct competitor to ESPN. 
That is my whole theory on how that's going to go. And that is going to either get rid of pay-per-views or make it cheaper. And there you go. That is everything that I would change about the UFC in this legendary rant. Thank you guys for staying along. And if there is something that I missed that you want to change about the sport, put it in the comment section down below. And to the people that said get rid of women's MMA, I half agree with you because half of women's MMA is garbage. The other half is good. And with that out of the way, thank you all for watching. Please consider a like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you all next time, everybody. Have a blessed day. Adios.